Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and we're gonna be looking at the short-term price movement. We did break through $29,000. We actually did it on a live stream earlier today. The price of Bitcoin did exceed $29,000. With that said, does it have anything left in the tank? If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel give the video a thumbs up also check out the telegram channel which you can find a link to in the description below let's go ahead and jump in so we're going to be covering the same things we covered during the live stream but we're doing a separate video in case you don't have time to watch a two hour live stream so the first thing is looking in terms of overvaluation from prior moves okay so the first one we notice is this has still not updated because we don't have a closing price yet which we know is closer to twenty nine thousand dollars you can see back in 2019, we came up to this level of overextension. If we were to reach that same level on this logarithmic regression band, it would correspond to a price of Bitcoin closer to $32,000. The reason why we look at this stuff is because we tend to have similar types of accumulation phases, like in the last cycle and in this cycle. But we've noted some of the similarities between this cycle and two cycles ago, right? So we came down to the bottom, to the top. We came out of, out of regression band, back down to another regression band lower, and then back up. So all we're kind of looking at here, and, and note that this move here was, was very short-lived. We did at least come back down to the bottom though. Pretty, some similarities, right, between, between this cycle over here. Uh, not, not identical, of course, but in general, a move to the bottom, we went up a couple regression bands, slightly higher than this one, all the way back down, back up to above this regression band here at the top. And then ultimately it trended sort of down, but mostly sideways. And it trended sideways from August until January. So about five months or so, and then it broke out. So we have that one, two, three, whoops, let me draw that again. So one, two, three, four, and then it, it continued on. And we've seen some similar moves in this cycle. Of course, they're not identical, but generally one in 2019, we came all the way down here and in, into 2018, up in 2019, back down, back up. Now, if we were to continue the same pattern from this cycle, which obviously there's a good chance we don't, each cycle does tend to have a very different personality, but if it did trend the same, it might look something like that and then ultimately break out later. Now we're not saying that's going to happen, but in terms of the short term move, if we were to make it to the top of the regression band that we made it to in 2019, here, it would correspond closer to a $32,000 Bitcoin. That would be if we made it there in the short term. Obviously, if this were to trend sideways for a while and then go up, then it would imply a higher Bitcoin because we know this will continue to increase. Okay, so that's the first thing we're gonna look at. The second thing is the the 20 week moving average. You guys know I really like the 20 week moving average in terms of its support during a bull market. Our bit our Bitcoin bull market support band now ranges from 15,484 up to 16,934. It obviously depends on what exchange you use, but more or less from 15.5k up to 17k. That's the 20 week SMA and the 21 week EMA respectively. Now, if you look to see when how the, the overextension from the 20 week, we're still fairly similar to what we saw in 2019. This has come up higher now. The only reason it looks lower is because we're looking at the BLX. Maybe we should in fact pull it up over here. We'll switch this to the weekly time frame. go to that same metric and see that we've essentially gotten to the same level of overextension from the 20 week moving average that we saw in 2019. We had a double peak here in terms of overextension from the 20 week. We just reached it. We'll see if we can trend higher or not. Remember, if you go, if you if we go back and revisit the macro downtrend, uh, that won't hold forever, but if we if we were to hit back up on that trend, 
then it would imply coming up to this point, which we saw for this earlier, it would imply around the 32 to $33,000 Bitcoin if it happened in the short term. So we're just looking at levels of overextension. I see a lot of people on, on Twitter and, and um, you know, Telegram channels saying that this time, you know, like we've, this is unprecedented and that we haven't seen anything like this before. But in terms of a lot of metrics, we have in fact seen stuff like this before. And can, compared to b prior blow off tops or, or market cycles, we were much further overextended at this point. Um, or by the time that people were saying, you know, this has never happened before. So to say that, you know, this has never happened before is a little bit misleading considering that we're essentially at the same level of overvaluation from our bull market support band as we were back in 2019. And then if you go back and look again at our regression rainbow, we're still, you know, we're still all the way, all the way down here. Um, not even back up to the same regression line that we were at in 2019. Of course, all this takes it takes into account a lot of assumptions, and that assumption is that the fair value of Bitcoin will monotonically increase. If you don't buy that, then maybe you don't buy this analysis, and that's okay. This is just one way that I like to look at the market. Now, another way is, again, to look at the regression bands, the fair value and the peak regression band, and just to see how far overvalued we were in 2019 compared to today. From this fair value, we reached an overvaluation of approximately 200%. If we were to reach 200% overvaluation from the current fair value, it would also imply around a $32,000 to $33,000 Bitcoin. So in terms of overvaluation from the 20 week uh, and overvaluation from the, the fair value, it still isn't that like impressive, right? I mean, of course, a move to 28K, 29K is, is amazing. Um, and it far exceeded my expectations in the short term. Uh, but again, that's why we're here is, is to take advantage of these bubbles that form and, and to, to recognize the opportunity that is there when they do form. Now, if we were to go all the way up to the top of the regression line here, if we were to go to the peak regression band, the prices of that currently would correspond to a range from 54,642 up to 80,501. So that would be if we were to say continue this run for, you know, if we continued the same run and stayed on course with this run and increased at the same rate here, we'd be looking to enter this band uh, by the end of the first quarter. That would be if we were to continue this run, okay? Uh, but of course, there's no guarantees that that will happen and that we could have a, a, a correction at some point and maybe revisit, revisit the 20 week SMA. Now remember, as we've said before, the 20 week SMA, uh, if history is any indication, we would visit it within the next couple of months. So sometime either by January or February, if history is any indication, we would revisit it. If we want to rewrite history and start going longer periods of time without revisiting it, then maybe that's possible and it extends out until March or April. But I would think that we would probably revisit it sometime within the next couple of months if history is any indication. Now, I will take this time to remind you that if you want to sign up for the premium list and get access to the exclusive content, the weekly reports, the weekly videos, the risk dashboard, the trading view indicators, the Telegram alerts channel, and a few other things, the sale is going to end on January 3rd. So make sure you sign up before that to get it, to get locked in before the prices go up if you're looking for you know, a community to be a part of throughout the duration of the market cycle and want access to uh, a, you know, a bit more content. So make sure you guys check that out before January 3rd. You can find a link to that in the description below. So as we continue on, this is one of those times where you know, mania takes over and it's hard to know exactly how far it can extend before, before we see a correction. You know, sometimes you look at a linear scale and, and we're already dwarfing the last bubble, which again, we, we knew someday we would. We knew someday we would come back and look at the bubble from 2017 and completely make it look like, you know, just but a little stepping stone onto a much larger bubble, right? Um, of course, there's the chance we, we continue on up and, and, and go to, you know, to much higher levels in, in 2021. Uh, or, you know, maybe it'll be more of a stepping stone type thing. Maybe, maybe we see a correction, you know, sooner rather than later, and then we continue on up. I don't really know. Um, what I can say, you know, one of the things that helps me whenever I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I should take profits or if I should not take profits, one thing that I'll, I'll sometimes think about is, you know, I'll think about the entry point that I had 
And, you know, I think a lot of people that watch this channel probably had entry points all the way down to $4,000, $5,000. And, you know, taking profits when you're up, say, 7x in, in you know, nine months or something, to me, it's not a bad thing. Again, it's not financial advice, and arguably anyone who takes profits today or tomorrow might look back at this in a week and wish they had held longer. Um, the problem is, again, is that no one knows how high it will climb before we see a correction, right? And, and of course, I'm starting to see a lot of comments now, like I saw back in 2017, people are saying this time is different, that some people even say that Bitcoin will never have any more corrections. So it just seems like we're, we're entering this delusion stage, right, of a, of a bubble. It seems like we're entering some, some level of delusion that, that we'll never see a correction. Um, one of the things I like to think about, right, is in terms of, uh, you know, one of the financial uh, analogies is, is pigs, right? Pigs can get fed, but, you know, if you get too greedy, the hogs will get slaughtered, okay? So that's when, you know, when I, when I think about taking profits, I still own the majority of my Bitcoin position. I have sold some of it, right? I have sold some of it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, even if the price were to continue moving up in the short term. If it continues to go higher, then I'll just start selling more substantial amounts of my Bitcoin. But I still have the majority of my Bitcoin. Well, you know, well over the majority of my Bitcoin still. But the reason I've sold some is in the event that there is a correction, I will have wanted to look back and say, I took advantage of that move. That's that's what I essentially will want to be able to look back and say, I took advantage of that bubble. Um, and, you know, that that ultimately entails, right, taking profits on the way up. And you just don't know, you don't know where the top is, right? You just simply don't know where it is. Um, so the way I think about it, right, is, is, you know, the pigs will be fed well, but if you get too greedy, the hogs will be slaughtered. So leave, you know, leave too, you know, if, if, if things get too far overextended, I would think about it in terms of leaving it for the pigs, right? You know, you've made a good investment. It's 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 paid off phenomenally well. Uh, there's nothing wrong, in my opinion, from my my perspective, from taking some some profits every now and again, right? Taking profits ensures that you live to fight another day. Of course, you have to consider the tax implications, and with it being the end of the year, maybe that's something you would want to consider not doing if you if you don't want to have to pay the taxes on it in the in the short term. But in terms of in terms of overextension, you know. We, we don't really know where the top is. I'll, I'll contend it could, it could easily can easily go higher. It could go to 31, 32K, it could go to 40K, it could go to 50K, right? I don't really know. Um, but again, we'll see where it goes. Well, what I will say is when we look back, when we, when we take, um, when we kind of like look back at it in a few weeks or a few months, however long it lasts, before we, you know, get geared up for the, for the next major move, and, and obviously this could be the major move already, uh, but when we look back, we'll just want to say, you know what, we saw we saw the bubble form. We want to we want to make sure we protect our investment and not just watch it go up and then come crashing back down. So I still think there there, there could be room in the tank here for Bitcoin, right? It's a twenty eight eight seventy one. But most people in the space, I think, will will argue that we are due for a correction at some point soon. The danger is that the people that have been waiting for a correction since ten k. Are, are probably starting to really feel trapped, okay? Because, you know, they've wanted to ride this wave and maybe they were riding, waiting for the gap to be filled or they were, they were waiting for some arbitrary thing to happen and then it didn't happen and it just keeps going up and up and up, almost, you know, essentially leaving these people behind. Um, so by the time it does correct, right, whether it continues up and then corrects or it corrects now, you know, by the time it does correct, it could be that the correction could end at a spot much higher up than people would have initially wanted to buy in in the first place. So that's the danger. And you can see that right in the last cycle. Uh, you know, if we switch back to a, a log scale here, imagine imagine you were, you know, you, you saw this move, it came back down and you were waiting for say a $300 Bitcoin and never came. And then you saw it to trend up and you said, okay, well, I'll just wait for a correction. And you don't buy it at 400 and you don't buy it at 450. And then you say, okay, when it comes back down to 400, I'll buy it. It goes up to 700 and you're, or 800 and you're like, oh, what do I do now? And then the correction finally comes and you're like, all right, great, it's coming. I'll just wait for 400. And it has a wick to 483 and continues on up, right? That's a way that you can get trapped in a bull market because you, you always end up 
waiting for a, a larger correction that never actually comes, right? You'll see 40% corrections, but the 40% or 30% or 20% corrections start at a price much higher than where you thought it would start. So that's the danger of, of it. Now, again, I'm not buying Bitcoin anymore. That doesn't mean that the price of Bitcoin can't trend higher. It just means that at this point, my risk appetite has been far exceeded in terms of purchasing Bitcoin. If you are buying Bitcoin right now, I will wish you the best of luck. Hopefully you have a great short-term ROI. Uh, but if you are buying it, recognize that you might not have a great short-term ROI. But if you're here for the next several years, then I think there's a good chance you will still make out quite well, even buying it at 29K. I've said for months and months that if I didn't own Bitcoin, I would be buying it. I'm coming from it from a biased perspective, having bought the significant, like, you know, my majority stack of Bitcoin in this regression band, right? I always said, whenever we come back out of it, we'll look back and say, ah, oh, we wish we had bought more. It happens every single time. It's happened this time again. It'll happen again in the future when we come back into it. Well, you know, instead of the people accumulating that would have said they would have accumulated, right? They'll see it come back down and then they'll, they'll start to get too greedy again. And they'll say, I'll just wait for it to keep dropping. And then it doesn't. And then it continues on up. So just something, something to keep in mind. Hopefully this video has been useful. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Make sure you check out the premium list as well. The prices will go up on January 3rd and you can find a link to that in the description below as well. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.